He had come to seek and to save the lost, and he was successful in completing his mission, despite the fact that it required him to drink from the cup of suffering until the very end. His openness in prayer demonstrates the depth and quality of his relationship with the Father. It was very tough. The disciples underestimate the gravity of the situation, and they fall asleep. Luke 22 verses 43 to 45 Now an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, deeply distressed and anguished almost to the point of death, he prayed more intently, and his sweat became like drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he rose from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping from sorrow, and he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not fall into temptation. An angel appears to comfort him. The significance of the angelic appearance is that it demonstrates heaven's willingness to stand by Jesus as he faces his calling. As he faces rejection and death, Jesus lays his burdens before God. This is a very human portrait of Jesus as he faces his death with a range of emotions. Luke's portrait of Jesus does not conceal his divinity. He portrays Jesus as someone who can relate to our flaws and traumas. Hebrews 4, verse 15, Amplified Bible For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize and understand our weaknesses and temptations, but one who has been tempted, knowing exactly how it feels to be human in every respect as we are, yet without committing any sin. This text reveals something about Jesus' character while demonstrating how we can face the great trials of life that God sends us. These verses show a man who is reliant on God and determined to do his will. We see a person who faces adversity by turning to God and another who expresses his intense emotions to God in prayer. Jesus is not spared the trial, but what is supplied is the strength to face it. Though he does not hesitate to ask if another way can be found, he affirms his determination to follow God's will. Heaven responds by giving Jesus the strength to face what God has called him to do, not by granting his request for another way, the passage revolves around this union of submission to the divine call and divine strength supplied. This passage reveals exemplary points about Jesus' character as he faces the cross trial. In prayer, Jesus expresses both his pain and his need to God. His custom of communicating with God is unaffected by the unusual events that occur in his life. We frequently neglect to go to God with our needs when we are the busiest. Trials frequently bring us to our knees, but the hectic pace of life frequently keeps us on the move and prevents us from praying. That is not true of Jesus. His pattern reminds us that prayer is essential, even in the midst of chaos. And his prayer is not just to check in. It is full of honesty, emotion, and pain. True prayer necessitates effort. Too often, rather than laboring in prayer, we bow our heads, close our eyes, and let our minds wander. In prayer, Jesus demonstrates honesty and humility. He sincerely hopes that God will not force him to go through what is ahead of him and shares this openly, but he is even more committed to doing God's will. The prayer, while distinct from the laments in Psalms, is similar in that the petitioners also expressed their deepest emotions and pain to God. The private confrontation that occurs in prayer frequently produces the solace we require to take our next steps while holding God's hand. Furthermore, prayer is not a haphazard activity. As he seeks God in the midst of his situation, Jesus prays with his entire being. He even sweats blood drops. 
Jesus can walk with God because he seeks God on a regular basis. It is interesting that Luke, a physician, would bring up this unusual medical condition. Hematidrosis is a rare condition. The current understanding is that when someone is stressed, tiny capillaries within sweat glands rupture, allowing blood to mix with sweat. As explained by Dr. Frederick Zugaby, around the sweat glands there are multiple blood vessels in a net-like form. Under the pressure of great stress, the vessels constrict. Then, as the anxiety passes, the blood vessels dilate to the point of rupture. The blood goes into the sweat glands. As the sweat glands are producing a lot of sweat, it pushes the blood to the surface, coming out as droplets of blood mixed with sweat. This certainly describes Jesus' situation in the garden, but there is one tricky word in the Greek which should give us a bit of pause. The text says that his sweat became Jose, great drops of blood. Jesus in Gethsemane and his agony is the main point of the narrative. When Jesus arrives in the garden, he tells his disciples that he is deeply troubled and distressed. He is overcome with grief to the point of death. Luke captures this by referring to sweat as if it were drops of blood. Why is he overcome right now? His pain was not simple but rather complex. We can only begin to comprehend his agony by remembering that he had to bear the penalty that sin deserved for millions upon millions of people. In the garden, Jesus' humanity is fully revealed. We see Jesus in his, dare I say, most vulnerable moment. He remains sinless, yet he is now experiencing the fullness of what it truly means to be human. It is here that he will experience our grief. It is here that he will experience stronger temptation than any of us. So it is fitting to say that he was tempted in every way. And it is the view into the cup that causes Christ to pray. If it is possible, take this cup from me. He appeals. Silence. He appeals a second time. Silence. He appeals a third time. Silence. This silence lets us know that this was God's will. Jesus is mocked on the cross with taunts. His death, as unjust as it is, appears to be a defeat on the surface. But because of who he is, Jesus transforms it into victory, not just for himself, but for all who accept what he accomplished on a solitary piece of wood one Palestinian afternoon. Every leader feels alone at times, especially when venturing into new territory. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus experienced one of his most lonely moments. Every member of his team deserted him just hours before he was to be tried, tortured, and crucified. His story in the garden is one of history's most potent examples of a leader's dedication. Every leader who does something significant for God has a Gethsemane experience. What can we learn from this lonely time? Gethsemane is the location where, number one, spiritual battles occur. Number two, loneliness is felt. Number three, honesty is expressed. Number four, submission is required. Number five, strength is received. Why is this verse important for us to understand? We need to comprehend the solitude and the grief of Gethsemane because it helps us to understand the accomplishment of Gethsemane. Some have seen a relation between bloody sweat on the brow of Jesus with the curse of Adam who would toil by the sweat of his brow. Adam failed the garden test. The forbidden fruit was a burden he could not bear. He stumbled, and humanity was born as wrathful children from that point forward. However, Christ, the greater Adam, triumphed in the garden 
where Adam failed. The blood of Christ combines with Adam's sweat. He took the curse upon himself. That is why we are to witness Christ's anguish in the garden, because he could not let go of the cup, and he drank it all the way to the bottom. It means that there will be no more wrath directed at those united to Christ. He drank it instead of us. If he drinks it all, there will be none left for us. Yes, this was accomplished at Golgotha, but the obedience demonstrated in Gethsemane was also instrumental in removing the curse from us. His complete compliance at this time has been transferred to our account. This also lets us know that Jesus understands how it feels to be alone. He comprehends pain. He understands pain. We express our distress to Him. He comprehends. He has faced more temptation than any of us will ever face. He willingly and knowingly looked into the cup and drank it to the last drop. We can entrust our pain to Him. Have you ever had doubts about God's love for you? Take a look at the Garden of Gethsemane. You can see the Son of God sweating profusely, like drops of blood, or perhaps sweat mixed with blood, and you can see His determination to not only obey the Father, but to obey the Father in redeeming humanity. He drank from the cup in your honor. Look no further than the Father's silence. There was no other way to redeem humanity because His wrath would be poured out on His Son. Allow the logic of Romans 8 verse 32 to motivate you. He who did not spare His own Son, but gave Him up for us all, how will He not also, along with Him, graciously give us all things? If God had not been committed to your redemption, He would have let that cup pass from Jesus in the garden and transferred it to us instead. He would have let humanity be swallowed up by His wrath while preserving His Son. He, however, did not. Not only because He loves us, but also because this is who God is. It is in His nature to be self-giving, to give of Himself so that others may live. You can have faith in this. Who can be against you if God is on your side?